video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I don't think I've ever done this on my channel before. We're going to be doing a paint with me video. There's so many things that I need to get done. I have a couple things that I need to get done for the room makeover that's going on downstairs. The full video of that will be coming out soon. So I have a couple of those paintings. I have a little sign that I need to do. I also have a vase to paint so that's going to be a little bit different. These aren't all going to be landscape or just acrylic paint paintings. And then I also have a canvas that I need to do for my sister's room. So I thought that I'd get all that stuff that I need to get done done but also walk you guys through it on how I make my own paintings and it's actually a lot easier than you might think and I do it all the time. It's so fun especially if you love to be creative and you love to paint. This is definitely a great project for you and if you're new to my channel if this is the first time seeing my face make sure that you subscribe down below. You give the video a thumbs up to let me know if you like this video. Also let me know in the comments if you like the style of video. I would definitely like to do more of them but yeah today is an overcast summer day so I thought we'd take advantage of it and get some indoor projects done. So I'm excited to spend the day with you guys or the next few days and I believe that is everything. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So I think first up I want to start small. I'm going to be painting this little sign. We got this from a garage sale. I'll have that whole haul video linked down below. I found so many beautiful things and lots of project pieces for super inexpensive. So we have this little blessed sign. We love the wood on the outside, but I want to make it more of a moody landscape. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to tape it off and sort of white it out, sort of give us a nice white base. And then I'll sort of go on Pinterest and sort of figure out what I want to do. But I think some very like contrasty like blacks and dark browns is gonna look really good, especially with this very light frame that goes all the way around. And we got this for two bucks. So this is gonna look a lot more expensive when we are done with it. But I think the transformation of this one is gonna be really fun. So as I said, our first project is going to be this cute little sign. The room I'm making this for has a lot of green tones, lots of nature incorporated. So I wanted to make something a bit more neutral as well as moody. So there's going to be lots of blacks and grays. Specifically, this one is going to be inspired by this photo that I believe I found on Pinterest. So that's what I'm going to try to replicate for this one. So as I said, first I'm going to tape it off just to make sure we get clean lines and we're not going to get any paint on the frame. And now we're going to start priming the piece. So this part is super easy. If you ever have anything that already has something on it, whether that be a sign like this or even another landscape that you want to cover up, starting with a blank slate is the best way to do it. So I believe I did about three, maybe four coats of this white paint. And I'm just using a white acrylic paint. My favorite brand for acrylic paint is Americana. It's kind of middle of the road in terms of price. And it covers up really well. It's really easy to work with. It's not too thin, not too thick. It's right in between. And trust me, I've done lots of painting in my days. And this one is the best one that I've found so far. Next, we're going to be mixing up our colors. Of course, this is 100% dependent on the painting that you are trying to recreate. Create. And this part is super easy. You're just going to look through the painting. You're going to figure out what the main colors are and try to replicate those as much as possible. When doing this step, it's really important to know your color wheel, know what neutralizes which color. And even if you're not so great at that, there are so many colors to choose from at craft stores. Now let's get into the actual painting. Since this is acrylic, I tend to do this very fast. That way I can blend as easily as possible. So we're doing one final layer of white all over the surface and almost immediately after we get that on there we're gonna go in with our other colors. The white just allows for a nice wet base that blends effortlessly and as you can see that dark green that I'm going to be starting with is not coming off as dark because it is blending in with that white. Of course this is different if you're using an oil paint. Oil paints take very long to dry and therefore are very easy to blend together so if you do have oil paints I definitely recommend that but just to make it easy and affordable I'm showing you how to do it with acrylic paints. And the big the biggest tip that I have for landscape paintings is to start with your background and work in layers. Because this one didn't really have much of a background color, it was mostly clouds and just all kinds of different streaks of color in the sky, I did start
start with the ground because it was a lot more saturated and then slowly built up color in the sky. And this is when looking at color is really important. I was going back and forth from my reference photo the whole entire time, trying to replicate the look of it as much as possible. There were lots of warm tones, lots of grays. There were some areas of the sky that were a lot darker than others. And another thing I like to mention whenever I'm doing landscape paintings is that it's not super complicated when it comes to brushes. For the most part, I use two different brushes, maybe even one brush for a whole entire landscape painting. For this one, I believe I just used my flat brush and then I used a very small detailed brush to do all of the smaller details. And as you can see, once I had my foreground and my sky all done, that's when I went in with my darker colors and did all of the greenery and vegetation and details. And I'm starting with my darkest color, which is that very dark black, using sort of a medium tone color and finishing with a sort of white color to sort of add in those highlights. And the great thing about landscape paintings is you don't need to be super exact. For the most part, I use lots of padding motions. And now I'm going in with that very small detail brush to add in those highlights, as well as some of the shadows that are around what looks to be a body of water. And this step really just adds a lot of dimension, makes it feel more real. And like I said, I did want to incorporate some more of those black, very moody colors to my painting. So that worked really well. And finally, I'm using some tans as well as some lighter greens to add the grass as well as the other plants and things that are going to be in the front. And once I'm happy with how it's looking, we're going to peel off the tape. And it was super satisfying. This part definitely comes in handy and makes the piece look even more professional. And it really feels like it was supposed to be this way in the first place. It definitely does not feel like a DIY project. And that is how we turned this cute little sign, something very basic and simple, into a very beautiful landscape painting. I plan on using this for some shelf styling, maybe to put on top of some books. You could also incorporate this sort of piece in a gallery wall. I just feel like this turned out so well and is going to be perfect for styling. Next up is this set of gold frames that I found at a garage sale. The thing I loved about these was the frame itself and it came with these blue paintings inside that I just really wasn't a big fan of. So I decided to make something different to go inside. Now, of course, this part is going to be different for everyone. Right as I started taking these apart, I realized that they were manufactured to not be able to rotate artwork and switch it out. They were permanently stapled into the back. So it did take me quite a while to get these out. I skipped over the part where I had to use some pliers to get the staples out and eventually was able to get the middle out. And for the second one, it worked a lot better just to use this little palette knife. You could also use a utility knife to go all the way around it. That piece of paper just came off and then I just had to get the insert out. So once we have everything out of the frame, I'm just going to be taking everything apart. Like I said, I can tell that these were not made to be taken apart because there were so many layers and it took a long time to get them all apart. And there also was a little red piece that went all the way around and I knew I didn't want that so I removed that just so I was left with the mat. Now I'm just using some cardstock that I had left over from another project and cutting them to size to fit over those blue photos. I made them slightly bigger just to make sure everything was going to be covered and then once I had one cut I used the other to measure it out and get two identical pieces. Now this is the photo that I used to create these paintings. This is what it was inspired by and as you can see I have it set up that way I can easily look at it and reference it as I'm going through the project. We're starting very similarly as we did the first one. We're starting with the background and I'm starting with white and I'm slowly going to be pulling in some pastel blue and just looking at the picture, I could tell that the color got more saturated as it got closer to the foreground or to the horizon. So I tried to mimic that in both. And just like with last time, we started with that white. That way the colors would blend effortlessly together and make a very seamless gradient. Once we've gotten our sky down to about halfway down the paper, we're going to start adding in the actual landscape part. So as I said for the first one, these projects are all going to be 100% dependent on whichever painting you choose to recreate. In this specific one, it started with the lightest green and slowly got darker as I went down the page. And again, since these are acrylic paints and they're going to dry really fast, I did work really quickly to try and blend those colors together. Another thing you may notice as I do all of these landscape paintings is I very rarely will wipe off or clean my brush unless there's a drastic color change. So for the green, it is only slightly getting darker. So I never wiped off my brush one time and that really helped to seamlessly blend the colors together as well. Another thing you may notice is that I did keep these together side by side just because I wanted them to sort of be a continuous picture that has maybe even been cut in half. So you'll see them very close to each other that way it can sort of make them connected. Now that we have a really good base, we're gonna start adding in all of the details. What I loved about this landscape is how much 
greenery there was and how much visual interest there was. I'm starting with a sort of medium toned green and I'm sort of following the picture but because this is two paintings instead of one, like the original, I'm going to be adapting it a little bit to fit the two. And after I have my medium color, I'm going to go in with a darker and lighter colors. I have a lighter green for the highlights and then a sort of black dark green for all the shadows. And this just adds lots of dimension and makes the painting feel even more realistic. Now I'm doing some more highlights on the trees. I'm using a very light green. You may notice I keep the shadows to one side of the trees and then put the highlights on the other. Again, this just makes it look very realistic and gives the trees a lot more interest and dimension. Now you may have noticed in the inspo picture that there is a sort of river or stream. I decided to just put that in the right print instead of trying to make it run through both of them. And then later you'll see that I make up for it with more vegetation on the left print just so they're nice and balanced out. I started with a pale blue as well as some white and roughly made that shape. And then I'm going in with darker greens as well as lighter greens to make shadows, highlights, and even grass all around it. Now we're going in with our super dark green. As it shows on the photo, I'm putting it right at the end of that river. Again, adding in those shadows and highlights. And then I'll just be adding more to the left side and just adding a lot of highlights and shadows, again, to make it feel even more realistic. And lastly, we're going to be adding those beautiful foreground details. There seems to be a lot of grass and wildflowers and all kinds of plants and vegetation. You could really either start with a lighter green or a darker green. I kind of did a little bit of both, but it's just important that you do it back to back just to make sure that the colors blend really well together. And again, this is going to be super random. We really want to make this feel as natural as possible. And then there seemed to be sort of a wheat sort of dry grassy material on the top. So I'm just going in with my white and my tan to sort of make some of those highlights and make it look really fluffy and wild just like the inspo picture. And lastly, we're going to be going in with our detail brush and I saw a few random shrubs that were sort of popping up. So I did those with my dark green and I also went in and added a few flowers as it showed in the picture. And I feel like this just added the perfect dainty detail. It's important to remember that everything in the foreground is going to be a lot more detailed than anything in the background. It's just as it is in real life. So things are going to be a bit more basic as you go towards the back, but I just really loved how these details made it feel even more realistic and again added a very dainty detail. As I mentioned, I did paint these on scrap pieces of cardstock and to attach them to the frame and to put them in the frame, I'm basically just going to tape them over the top and you can either use scotch tape or any sort of painter's tape. It really does not matter. Anything to just keep it in place and for some reason the mats on these were different colors but in my case they didn't even show through so I didn't need to worry about it and this is basically what they looked like on the mats. Just nice and flat and all we have to do is put them in the frames. And this is what they look like. I'm giving you the tiniest sneak peek of that bedroom makeover I was talking about. I love how naturalistic they are and work perfectly in the room. Good morning and welcome to day two. I am very tired but nonetheless we are going to work on some things today. So I have one more painting I need to do. It's for my sister's room so we're going to be covering this up and doing a big landscape painting on it. It's cute and all but we're going for a little bit more sophisticated so there's also a lot of dust on here so we should probably get that off. So yeah, we're going to basically prime this with white paint. I'll probably do that off camera because I'm not going to literally ask you to watch paint dry. So we're going to cover this up as best we can. We're probably still going to be able to see some of the lettering through it if you look up really close. But I'm going to try to find some sort of landscape painting to recreate that's a little bit more busy, I guess. That'll sort of distract from that. So we're going to do that. And while I'm priming it and everything, I'm probably going to do like three to possibly five coats of white just to cover everything up really nice. We are going to be working on this vase. And I did mention this before. We're basically gonna make this look like an aged stone vessel. If you guys want more of a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I do this, I'll have that video linked down below. I did like three different ways to upscale a very basic vase and make it look aged and beautiful and rustic. So I'll have that linked down below. With that being said, I will kind of tell you guys the steps of how I'm going to be refinishing this very roughly. Um, but like I said, if you want something very detailed, definitely head over to that video. So we're gonna work on this while we're working on priming it. And then once it's all primed and everything, we will paint 
the landscape. So I'm gonna pull out all of my paints and everything and we are going to get started. So I personally love this project because the shape and style of vase is so common at places like thrift stores and garage sales, which means that basically anybody can get their hands on them, which is what I love. So because this is glass and we're going to be using acrylic paint, I have a couple different sandpapers. I'm going to be using it to rough up the surface. I have 100 grit and I'm not sure what the more coarse grit is, but these are going to be very handy in scuffing up the surface so that the paint has a place to adhere to. After sanding it, this is what it should look like. We want as many scuff marks and scratches as possible. This just makes the surface a lot less smooth and as I mentioned earlier, gives the paint something to adhere to. Now we're just going to need a few materials to make this very stone-like and aged. These are the two acrylic paints I'll be using as well as some baking soda. I have used this trick in so many faux pottery projects before and there truly is nothing like it to get that aged ceramic feel. So I mixed my two colors together. I want to say it was about 50-50. If anything, I did a little bit more of that tan color just to make it more of a warm beige sort of neutral gray. Once you have the color that you'd like, you're going to mix in your baking soda. I added three to four tablespoons to really give us a nice sandy texture and something that was going to coat the vase really well. So now I'm just going in with a sort of medium sized brush and I'm going to be painting that all over the surface. You'll be able to see that I am not doing perfect strokes. I'm sort of doing a cross hatch sort of pattern, just going back and forth and trying to get that really rustic random texture. And as I'm going through, I'm trying not to make super thick places and I'm really just trying to give it a very even first coat. And I didn't take this all the way inside, but I did do it around the mouth of the vase. That way, if you were to look in there by any chance, it wouldn't look unfinished. So this is what it looks like immediately after getting that first coat on. It's not supposed to be perfect at this point. There's going to be parts where you're going to be able to see through, but this is the sort of texture that we're going to be going for. Once it's completely dry, we're going to go in with our second coat. If it's not completely dry, you're going to see that it's going to start to peel. If you go in with a new coat of paint too soon, and as you can see, I'm really emphasizing texture on the second layer because that's what's going to be showing. So I'm doing that same sort of crosshatch pattern as well as some padding motions to give it that very aged stone sort of look. And as you can see, that second coat really just enhances that color and all those padding motions and cross hatching gave it so much incredible texture. And for some reason, I thought I recorded this part, but I didn't. I did just use our pepper grinder to get some peppercorns all over the surface while it was still wet. And then I'm going in with my brush to sort of blend everything together with some more of that gray color. And after this, I thought that it was looking a little bit flat. I thought that the texture looked great, but I wanted to add in a little bit of dry brushing with this light beige color to give it a more natural feel. And this is the spray that I ended up sealing it with. I'll have it linked down below. I've used it for so many projects and it works so well. And this is how it turned out. I feel like it turned out so good. I love all of the texture and I think it looks great complemented with a very neutral bouquet of flowers. I'm really glad I ended up accenting it with some beige dry brushing. I feel like that really gives it that aged look. And this is a perfect example of turning something very basic into something very high end. Now on to our fourth and final project. This is going to be a very big one, so I'm going to be using a bit of a bigger brush, and I have plenty of paint to match the color scheme that we're going to be going for. So this one is inspired by this photo, very similar to things we've already created. Again, we're going to be going by a lot of the same principles. We're going to be starting with the sky and starting by painting this whole section a white color. And then for the specific photo, the sky gets darker as it goes up. So I'm starting with a very pale blue and sort of working my way up the canvas. So as I was going through this landscape painting, I realized that there was a lot of blue on mine in comparison to the other photo that this is inspired by. So I ended up just going with it and you'll see that I made a few changes at the end to sort of account for that. This painting is very large, so I really did have to work incredibly fast to get all these colors to blend together really well. And again, there was just lots of changes that I needed to make. You can see I'm sort of mixing that beige tan color into the blue towards the top in an attempt to make it a little bit more neutral. And I didn't want as much of a slate blue to be super noticeable. So sometimes doing these types of paintings is going to be thinking on the fly and just sort of making things to how you want them to be. And you really do have to think fast while your paint is still wet. Once my sky is all set to go, I'm starting to make the foreground. Again, I'm starting with that sort of slate blue, but I'm adding in a lot of that tan color to neutralize it more similar to what the painting looks like. I'm starting with this part because this is in the background and then there's more of a 
sand dune that's going to be at the front. And I'm also just roughly cleaning up my edges as I go, but I wasn't too exact knowing that I was going to be painting over them most likely. And something I loved about this painting was how much beige there was and that sort of sandy color. So that's what we're going to be going in with next. And like I said, this goes over that sort of slate blue mountain in the background. And there also is a bit of grass and vegetation all around this. This part, I really did pay attention to how it looked in the photo. And then the last major part of this was going to be all of the trees. I love the way that this really dark sort of olive green contrasts with all the other light tones going on. And again, just going in with different tones of green to make shadows and highlights. And the very last step is going to be adding in our clouds. As I mentioned, there was a lot of blue in this painting that I didn't necessarily want. So I did make quite a few more clouds than the inspiration picture. And I loved how this was sort of a sunset painting as there were some sort of orange beige clouds in the middle. And I feel like this just added a lot of interest to the painting and really filled in that empty space. And this is how it turned out. This is how it looks in my sister's room. As you can see, her room is very plain, lots of gray and neutrals, and I feel like it just goes super well. And she's going to be adding a few things to her room in the next couple months. I feel like this is a really good way for her to get some inspiration and she could mix in some neutrals like greens as well as blues to complement the painting. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed spending the last few days with me getting a bunch of painting projects done. Hopefully you got a lot of inspiration for any upcoming projects that you have in your own home. All of these were super easy to do. I definitely encourage you to not be intimidated. Landscape paintings look like they can be complicated, but really anybody can do them. You just have to practice. And I just really love how all of these turned out. With that being said, a lot of the projects I did in today's video are for that room makeover that we're going to be doing soon on my channel, so make sure you're looking out for that video. Just waiting on a couple final touches, and then I'll start making that video for you guys, and I'm super excited to be sharing that with you, so make sure that you're subscribed. Give the video a thumbs up if you like this style of video. I could definitely do this sort of get it all done, sort of crafty edition with you guys more often. Let me know in the comments below which project was your favorite, and I believe that that is everything. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time over on my channel with me today. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. Bye.